let's have a look at something which is definitely an extension from the extension one type of polynomial question. It's how we deal with multiple roots, so roots to the power of something. <coughs> now, what happens is this. If a polynomial has a root at x equals a of multiplicity m, where m is bigger than 1, so whether it be a double root, triple root, or what have you, then what will happen is its derivative will also have a root, but its multiplicity will just be one less. And so that can sort of help. If, if you know you've got a cubic that has a double root, then what you can do is you can differentiate it, which gives you a quadratic, which is a lot easier to solve than a, a cubic, and then you can find the double root and go from there. So let's just prove that. So what I'm saying is it has a root, x minus a as to some power, times some other polynomial. And of course that other polynomial, uh, a is not a root of that, otherwise its multiplicity wouldn't be m, and we're also saying m is bigger than 1. So if I want to differentiate this, I'd have to of course use my uh, product rule. So write down the first diff the second, plus write down the second diff the first. Now, when we have a look at what we've got, hopefully we'll notice there's a common factor there of x minus a, but when we factorise, we always take out the lower power. So I get x minus a to the power of m minus 1 times something. Now, obviously I don't know what it is, but clearly it will be a polynomial because I've got x minus a times some derivative of a polynomial, which would be a polynomial. And then I've just got m times some polynomial. So I could say it is equal to x minus a to the power of m minus 1 times some polynomial. So it does have a root of multiplicity m minus 1 because it can't have a root in the uh, brackets here of a because we know it's a factor of, uh, of this first one. So when I substitute it into the first one, obviously I'm going to get 0. But in the second one, we have specified a is not a root of qx. So therefore, you won't get zero when you sub it into that second term. So we know it's not a solution to whatever that new polynomial is. So therefore, it is only a root in the first one. So it's multiplicity of m minus 1. So it would always be 1 less. So here's the sort of question that I was talking about. We've got this cubic to solve. And cubics are, of course, uh, difficult to solve unless they turn out to be nice numbers. Uh, given that it's got a double root. So to save myself time, instead of trying to find the solution to the original polynomial, because it's a double root, I'll try and find a solution to the derivative. The derivative is a quadratic, quadratics being a lot easier to solve. Uh, that factorises to be 3x plus 1, x minus 3. So it gives me two possibilities for the double root. Either it's going to be 3 or it's going to be minus a third. One of those makes sense, one of those does not. Without cheating, of course, which one is which? And why? Right, now, what we're saying is the, the double root or the factor that will end up being squared is either going to be, we're either going to have x minus 3 squared or we're going to have 3x plus 1 squared. Exactly. The original question, if we look at it, it's monic, so it doesn't make sense that 3x plus 1 would be the double root. So we can save ourselves a little bit of time by using logic like that. I'm not going to bother testing minus 3. I'll just test x equals 3 to make sure it works. If you sum it back into the first one, right, so that one not possible. If I sum it back into the first one, sure enough, it does work. 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 18 does work out to be zero. So okay, I know it's x minus 3 squared. The other factor then must be linear. So I know the constant times the constant must give me the constant. Well, 3 squared is 9, so in the other factor must be 2. Okay. That's one way I could work out those factors. I suppose once I know it's 3, I could also go and use our idea of sum of the roots or product of the roots or something like that. I, I could use that to find the, the other one as well. So anyway, there we go. Now, the answer to the question is just x equals negative 2 or x equals 3. If they were to ask me what are the roots, then the answer would be 
negative 2, negative 2, and 3. There's a subtle distinction there. If I'm solving the equation, I, know I only need to write down the solution x equals minus 2 once. But if they're asking me what are all the roots or the zeros, if it's that type of question, then I must list them all. So if I have a double root, then it's listed twice. All right. I thought this was a really good question uh, because, look, it, how cool is this? The year was 1991, which is a palindrome, right? No, no, but better, have a look, have a look. Palindrome. Px equals, but look at the coefficients, 1abA1. Also, palindromic. Oh, how cool is that? Anyway, <laughs> let's have a look at the actual question. Uh, the condition they put on it is that 2 plus b squared is not equal to 4a squared, but I'm sure you realise that anyway. Uh, that's obvious, isn't it? Okay, we'll see why in a second they've given us that little condition there. They want us to show that alpha, in other words, the root of this equation can't be 0, 1 or minus 1. Um, this is a good question because a lot of people overthink extension 2 problems. There's always gift marks in there. And this is a gift mark. It's not that difficult. Show that alpha can't be 0. In other words, show that 0 is not a solution. You just substitute it in. That's all it really is. So substitute zero into this polynomial, you get the answer one, which is not equal to zero, so their alpha can't be a solution. So don't overthink the problem. The basics still work. One and minus one is a little bit trickier. If I sub in one, I get two a plus b plus two. Okay. So as I don't know what a and b are right now, I, I don't know whether that's zero or, or not. So I'll sub in minus 1. And minus 1, I get minus 2a plus b plus 2. This is where this piece of information comes in handy. I know 2 plus b squared can't equal 4a squared. Therefore, 2 plus b cannot equal plus or minus 2a. So plus or minus 2a plus b plus 2 can't equal zero. Ah, so 2a plus b plus 2 can't equal zero. And minus 2a plus b plus 2 can't equal zero. So therefore, 1 and minus 1 can't be solutions. So the 1 and the minus 1, that was a little bit tricky. That's a nice extension to your question. The zero, I guess, was the, the gift mark in the question. Uh, okay, so hence alpha can't be plus or minus 1. All right, so that's the first part of the question. We're now going to show that 1 over alpha is a solution. So if alpha is a solution, well, again, all I've got to do is show that 1 on alpha, when I sub it in, I'll get 0. Oh, interesting. 1 on alpha to the power of 4a on... Oh, well, let's make it all one fraction here. Denominator will be a to the power of 4, or oh, alpha to the power of 4. But look what happens on top. I get 1 plus a alpha plus b alpha squared plus a alpha cubed plus a to the alpha, I keep calling it a instead of alpha, alpha to the power of 4. Well, on the top of the fraction, then I've got polynomial alpha. But they told me polynomial alpha, or alpha is a solution, so therefore polynomial alpha is equal to 0. So this expression does equal 0. So yes. 1 on alpha is a solution. So long as alpha is a solution, then 1 on alpha will also be a solution. Deduce that if alpha is a multiple root, then its multiplicity must be 2. And further, that 4b must equal 8 plus a squared. Okay, here's the logic about why its multiplicity must be 2. If alpha is a double root then so is 1 on alpha, because we just said that if alpha is a solution, then 1 on alpha is also a solution. So I've got alpha, therefore I must have 1 on alpha. But if I've got alpha twice, I must have 1 on alpha twice as well. Because every time alpha is a solution, 1 on alpha is a solution. So that gives me four solutions. However, we've got a quartic. And a quartic, we know, will have a maximum of four solutions. So I found them all. 
Well, therefore, it could only be a double root. Because if I was now to go say, oh, it's a triple root, then I'd have three solutions for alpha, and then I'd also have three solutions for one on alpha. That gives me six, but it's a quartic. I can't have six solutions to a quartic. So no roots, therefore, can have a multiplicity that is bigger than two. So if there is a multiple root, it has to be of multiplicity two. Now, polynomial, let's find its derivative, because remember, if it's a double root, then it will also be a solution of the derivative. So there's our derivative. I'm going to let the roots be. I know the roots of this derivative will be alpha, because alpha is a double root. So therefore, it'll be a solution to the derivative. But I also know one of the other solutions of the derivative will be 1 on alpha. Because if 1 on alpha is a double root, then 1 on alpha must be a solution to the derivative. Which leaves me just a third root, which I'll, I'll just call beta. Don't know what that one is. So the three roots of this cubic are going to be alpha, 1 on alpha, and beta. Okay, let's play with it. Some of the roots will be alpha plus 1 on alpha plus beta. That turns out to be minus 3 quarters a. Uh, so there's the sum of the roots taken one at a time. If I do it two at a time, we get one plus alpha beta plus beta on alpha, and that will be a half b. And then product of the roots, so three at a time, we simply will get beta is equal to minus a quarter a. So I now have three expressions. Hopefully I can manipulate these to end up with 4b as 8 plus a squared. So let's substitute the third one into the first one. Uh, so I've eliminated beta, and I get alpha plus 1 on alpha is minus a half a. Now if I substitute it into the second one and eliminate beta from that one, a little bit more working, but then also substituting in for the alpha plus 1 on alpha that I get here, and you can see eventually, a bit of algebra, we get there, h plus a squared is indeed... 4b. There's probably other ways of getting that, but that's just uh, one way of manipulating it. Okay, so in our pretend Cambridge, we have questions 1 to 16, and we'll take a few out of Patel as well for this one, I think. 